like to call the Committee of the Whole meeting for April 12th, 2022 to order at 9.31. I would like to take this opportunity to respectfully acknowledge that the municipality of Jasper and Jasper National Park are on Treaty 6 and 8 territories, as well as Métis Region 4. This land is the traditional territory, meeting ground, gathering place, traveling route, and home for the Deneza, Mahiawak, Anishinaabe, Sequebic, Stony Dakota, and Métis. Council, you have the agenda in front of you. Are there any additions to the agenda? I see no hands. Do I have a councillor willing to make a motion to approve the agenda? Councillor Melnick? All in favor? Agenda is approved. Council, you also have a new the minutes from the March 22nd Committee of the Whole meeting. Are there any additions? Oh, sorry. Deletions, corrections to that agenda, or those minutes. Councilor Melnick. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Hall. Um, I believe on page five, item 137 uh, slash 22, the mayor had excused himself from the meeting. And we show six councillors voted in favor, but I think there was only five of us. Thank you, Councillor Melnick. Make those corrections. Any other corrections from the uh, minutes from March 22nd? Do you need to motion that they're approved? I, okay. Have a council really take motion to approve the minutes with the change from Council Melnick, Council Demota. All in favor? That's carried. Are there any business arising from the minutes? I see no hands. Oh, count, uh, Mayor Ireland. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councillor Hall. I'm not used to such rapid movement. <laughs> um, I, I did have a, a question um, arising from the minutes with respect to um, the motion number 13222, and that is uh, the direction. Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, it's not the motion. The motion was to defer and we're behind now because we had a special meeting. But the, the question of sidewalk seating, I just wanted if administration could to give us an update on where that stands. I know there is certainly interest in the business sector to understand um, what they can anticipate in terms of commercial use of public space for the coming season. So I, I presume that from the direction and it's not specific to these minutes, but the, uh, the question of the uh, municipal application of Parks Canada for discretionary use permit for public space. If you could just update us on that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you Mayor Allen. I'm Mr. Yeah, thanks, I'm being Deputy Mayor Hall. So uh, the latest information that I have was that uh, Director Benoit, immediately following the special council meeting, prepared the municipalities. Uh, submission for discretionary use and made that submission uh, the Friday of that same week. So it is in Parks Canada. I don't know whether we've had a response back from Parks Canada at this stage, uh, but I know that from our end, the municipality submitted within uh, three days of uh, that council direction being provided. Uh, we will follow up with Parks Canada. I have my uh, regular meeting with uh, my, the manager of municipal and healthy services. I'll check on the status of development from John. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Satisfied with that, that response. It's not in our court right now, um, but it is April 12th, and I believe that our recommendation was that um, the, the initiative for this season could unfold as early as May 1st. So, of course, um, those who are inclined to take advantage need a little bit of lead time to get organized, and there's only a couple of weeks left. But thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor Island. Any other business arising from the minutes? Okay, we'll move on to item number six, presentations. I'd like to welcome to our chamber, Danny Pruchette. He is going to talk to us about the Snakes Hill Reforestation Project. 
Good morning, uh, members of council. Yeah. 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 Just keep it, press it, and then I can just let me get yeah. Oh, there you go. Jeez. Awesome. Apologize. We're practically a counselor now. <laughs> I guess I'm not just the front, are they? Uh, anyway, good morning, uh, members of council. Uh, Mayor Ireland, um, I'd like to begin just by congratulating the new members of council and thank you for your your service and of course the incumbents who continue to serve. It's uh, it's very much appreciated and uh, of course Mayor Ireland, your contribution to uh, this community is beyond measure. Thank you so much. Um, Snakes Hill. Now I'm talking this morning about a proposal to do a revisitation, if you will, of Snape's Hill and its history. And before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, Bob Kobe for his wonderful piece in his local paper. It helped to get the word out there and give people really a thumbnail idea of the history of Snape's Hill and the possibility of uh, doing something more uh, formal uh, going forward. Um, so today, uh, I, I was telling Mayor Ireland this morning, I edited my presentation by 75%, so you won't be bored too long with me here. Um, now, um, the beauty of, of, of the local, of course, is it gets people out and know what is actually happening in our, any of our projects. And of course, um, my, my job here will be simply to put some flesh on the bones. Now, Parks Canada, over the last number of years, has been actively doing a restoration project of areas, green spaces that have been deforested, largely due to the, uh, the pine beetle kill. And uh, among those locations, of course, was Snape's Hill. Um, now, last fall, uh, under the direction of Marcy Malcolm and her restoration crew, which consists largely of uh, graduation students, fourth-year students from the University of Victoria. And they introduced uh, roughly 80 small Douglas firs that were remnants from the, uh, from the, uh, from the pipeline project. Um, of, those, of those 80 trees, uh, we're talking probably 10 inches high, um, 57 of them survived. Uh, as you, re you may remember, last year we had that extreme heat dome, and of course these trees were small, and sadly they weren't really uh, cared for properly. Now, having said that, 57 out of 80 is is a pretty high success rate, uh, given given the circumstances. Now, I have approached Parks Canada, and moreover, I've approached the restoration crew to. Uh, do a robust planting on Snape's Hill. In other words, we're not talking about 10 inch tall trees, we're talking about trees that will be planted more like a grove than a nursery. So the trees will be of three or four different sizes, heights, all the way up to possibly uh, 36 inches tall. And they will be planted on all of the slopes on Snape's Hill. Uh, this planting will be taking place on May 12th. 2022. Now, to facilitate that, I have organized a auxiliary volunteer crew to assist with Parks Canada students and uh, introduce the larger trees that day. Now, um, it's very important to know that this heat dome could happen again, and the 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 size of these trees are going to require a very consistent watering protocol. So Parks Canada's crew, Marcy Malcolm's crew and, and of students are going to add this site to their watering uh, protocol to keep the trees nourished. Now, even with that in place, it is really necessary to, to have more watering done for these trees. So in order to, 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 to facilitate that, 
I have put together what I call the colored tails system. Now, if I think you may have a picture of, of the, the, the water tank that was donated to me. So what the water pail system is, is I've taken Snape's Hill. Well, I haven't actually physically done it yet because we're not going to do it till the day of the planting. We don't want, this is a historical site. And I must mention that before any of this went forward, I, I had meetings with uh, Mike Peter with Historical Bank of Parks Canada. I've had all, I've actually had, had all of my meetings, meetings on Snape's Hill. Um, this is a nice room, but Snape's Hill is quite a bit nicer. Anyway, um, he has been on the site and he is delighted with the project. As long as we respect the site and the historical features that are there. Um, I'm sure many of you, not all of you, been up there. It's uh, it's there are still very uh, noticeable uh, remnants of the buildings. And uh, so, before we begin, I will be taping all of these sites off with red tape. And this will serve two purposes. One, it will it will it will show the organic trail systems that people have been using since uh, Mayor Ireland was a boy, and they're very organic and they're very well traveled. And that's where we would like people to go. We don't want any kind of uh, interruptions or, or uh, any more uh, desecration of these sites. So when we go and we do the plant on uh, Snape Hill, those will be defined. Now, I'm taking and I'll be taking Snape's Hill and dividing it into ten plots, each roughly thirty meters square. Some on the north side will be a little deeper, at roughly thirty meters square, and. The system will be so simple that it'll be fun, actually. So what I'll do is each plot will have a color, red, yellow, green, etc. And no two plots of the same color will be side by side. One plot will be on one side of the hill and the second, say yellow, for example, will be on the other side, which will encourage children, largely, to find the second spot and go over and water those trees. Now, each, each tail, will have a color stripe on it. And I, I will have tails of every size that a two-year-old right up to a 102-year-old will be able to carry. And the water will be supplied from the water tank that Trans Mountain has donated to me. The location of this tank is still to be determined, and I'm hoping that the meeting will be able to help me facilitate that so we get the most efficient ways of getting the water to the, to the watering crews. Now, at the water tank itself, I'm going to have a journal that, for example, if Councillor Hall had time to go water the yellow trees, she would leave in the journal Wendy Hall yellow, so that the next waters that come behind them will water the yellow ones again and leave out the ones that haven't been watered. Now, this seems simplistic and it seems sort of um, game like, but I can't, I cannot express enough how important it is for the first year, possibly two years, that these trees be maintained properly. We are looking for a very high success rate here. I, I would like to expect 85 to 90 percent is success rate. It's a, this is a lot of work and it is a marvelous project that deserves to be cared for. Um, now, Pants Mountain and their generosity will deliver this tank to the site for me. And of course, this is something that I would really require some help with the municipality as to where it can go and if there's any issues to its location and its safety or, or liabilities, what have you. I, I don't foresee any, but you never know in today's world. But um, This, of course, is the first phase of this project. As we all know, we've seen the history of Snape Hill with the, with the rail history, the Grand Trunk Pacific Railways history. Our community has, is deeply rooted in rail history. Um, I worked on the railway myself for 42 years. Uh, Mayor Island's father was an engineer on the railroad. Uh, it's been very good to our community. And really, this is part of their, their history. The Grand Trunk Pacific and the Canadian Northern became Canadian National which of course we have a large terminal here. And it would be my hope that 
we can talk with the CN and have them join us in a venture if we decide that it isn't desirable to put any kind of benching or any kind of plaquing the pictures. We've got some wonderful archives here in the museum with, uh, with uh, the railway history. And I and I have to give kudos out to, to Karen Byers. And uh, it's been a decade now, I think 2010, that Karen put together a wonderful uh, uh, piece on the history of Snape's Hill and primarily uh, the railroad and moreover the Parks Canada. And an interesting little side note is that once Parks Canada left, it was actually used, the buildings were actually used for housing because Jasper had a drastic shortage of housing. It's, a, it's, a, it's an endemic thing that we've had here for a long time. Now, I, did, I said it was one phase, and this is a deep one phase. And um, I've had some great conversations with some, with some terrific members of our community regarding the phases of it. And I think you all know Mike Dillon, and Mike has been, he's had several meetings on the Hill with me. And of course, we're looking at manageable. So the first year, the first phase is going to be the trees. Now, as, as old as the buildings and the history of the railway is there, it's really contemporary history compared to the trees. I mean, these trees were there 150 years before the railway even considered, before there even was a railroad. So they are the they are driving the bus, and we're talking about a robust plant here. We're talking 100 Douglas fir trees of varying size, up to 36 inches. So it is going to be astounding. Really. It's going to be lovely. So my vision, and it is just my vision at this juncture, is to create a contemplative space. It's not a phase two. It's not a dog park. It's not. It's not a playground as such, although you can bring your dog and you can certainly play. But the idea is to respect the history and to celebrate these wonderful iconic trees that we all have got the pleasure of seeing every time we hike. I think we're all hikers and walkers. Uh, and I surely hope you hug those trees because they'll hug you back. <laughs> anyway, um, in terms of the of the time frame, um, I've had people come up to me and, and, and tell me that this project is seemingly coming along too quickly. And I said, well, not really. I, I think that if you look at it historically, this project is actually 105 years late behind schedule, which would make the, anybody who took a stick from this building seem relatively minor. <laughs> but anyway, I, I would, my, my focus this year is I am inviting, I've asked a number of people to come and help us with the physical end of moving the trees. So the plan is on May 22nd, or pardon me, May 12th, we'll have two crews. We'll, I'm thinking probably as many as 20. Um, to be honest with you, the I think the concern we have is not enough people, but we may have too many. This is a historical site and we have to respect it. So, Having said that, nobody's going to be turned away, but the people that are actually going to have a shovel in their hand will have their name on the list with Parks Canada so that we, we understand who's there. But this project is not a secret and it is not to be a dabble about. This is a robust project and I would hope that this body and our community as a whole will embrace it, take ownership of it, and enjoy it. I don't know, I don't foresee offending anyone by this. And it's a marvelous space. It's probably two acres. I've asked to get the actual dimension. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing. But it's large. And given that we have our neighbors who are building more uh, infrastructure for their condominium compacts there, and really a deterioration of what is left of the historical remnants there in quite a sad state. So this is the time, this is the crossroads. And I think given everything else that's going on in this uh, world of ours, it's a happy project. It's a lovely project. I, I did use the, the term, it's a, it's a project for the soul. And it, it really is because it's not about, there's no commerce here. There's no, there's no special interest here. This is for a project, or it's a project for, for mankind. Bring your kids, Bring your dog, 
shift in our plan. And going forward, I think that would automatically get us into what would be the new best infrastructure, engine styles, interpreters, pictures, signage. Something that is in keeping with the time frame, 1910, 1912. Um, I have my own thoughts on that. But I would, of course, encourage and would need to have support of the council. And in terms of infrastructure study and a good varied group of thinkers, visionary thinkers, that can come up with something with that in mind. And um, along those lines, there are a couple of uh, practical infrastructure concerns that I think that the council could help me with. And that would be the installation of a water tank and a, a, a really efficient way to get the water to our little water. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Prashad. I want to thank you so much. This is an amazing project, and for the last couple of years, the time you put into this. Um, any comments from Council? Uh, Council Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Prashad. Uh, well, doesn't the saying go, uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, uh, but the second best time is May 12th? Uh, it's really funny. <laughs> exactly. Right? But yeah, like I, um, of course, uh, once the project gets moving uh, and and starts to have momentum, um, I guess maybe some people might think it's going too quickly, but I, I really uh, congratulate you on the work that you have done and uh, running up until now. And I'd like to put my support behind uh, um, assisting you and your group um, in any way feasibly possible. And so I guess my question too was uh, with regards to the watering tank, that watering tank has to be filled periodically. Um, would location near a uh, hydrant or our watering truck be of assistance? Like, a, um, there, how often do you think the water the, the water tank will have to be filled? Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Wilson. I, I, that's a great question. Um, originally, my thoughts were to put the water tank just off of the curb stop on Lodge Pool because it is an easy ascent to the top of the hill. And I bumped into one of my crew, uh, Scott Shirtle, who's a beauty, and um, he has some fire fighting experience. And he said, Danny, why don't you put it on the top of the hill and let the water run down, which of course is brilliant. So I don't know if there's any uh, logistical or historical reason why that can't happen, uh, but that doesn't make sense. And um, I talked to uh, a person approached me, uh, Ron Stankel, who's a long time resident, approached me and, and suggested um, that the water truck, the, the fire truck could fill that thing anytime. Mm -hmm. And as far as infrastructure, Lodgepole does have a fire extinguisher on the southwest end of it that is temporary under service, but I believe that might be because of freezing and they only use it in the summer. I don't know if that's a fact, but obviously there is that there. Um, so as far as the, the how often will we have to fill it? Um, I hope it's often. Um, the Parks Canada the restoration crew does have a water truck, but they will fill it also. Um, and I believe that uh, I don't know for certain, but the, I'm sure the fire department would be happy to fill it. And I would ask the municipality if they have, if they could help fill it. Um, the, the theory here is let's make the burden light. That's, that's, it, we're only talking about water. So I think that if we, if we can, the, the key here is to make sure that these trees are watered. So, if we can get a simplistic simple system, and I don't know that it gets any simpler than water fields, but um, if there's anything more uh, comprehensive that we can add to this, the watery protocol, then by all means, I think we should we should we should flush that all out so that there's not going to be if we get a 40 degree spell of 10 days, you're going to have you're going to have uh, dieback, and we don't want that. I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, we want to have a very high success rate. And I, I firmly believe we will. 
and not just of the trees, but uh, Snakes Hill is not is not uh, barren of other flora up there. There's a robust. There's the poplar trees. We have pine trees. We have remnants of the old Douglas fir trees. There's roses. There's any number of wildflowers. Snake Hill is is uh, going to become an extremely verdant space. It's not just just from the collateral nutrients that the, all the other plants are going to get from this tree grow. It's going to transform it. It really will, and it has to be. It has to be nurtured the first year. It's critical. First year, maybe two, because uh, that's when these trees are going to uh, really take root in a very physical way, but they're going to get to be with each other again. Douglas firs are very communal. They, if you walk in the forest and if you pay attention, every time you see a mother tree, you will see any number of trees around them. They grow in clusters, they grow, they love to be together. So this is going to be a wonderful study of, of these plants. The, the students with the Victoria will be planting these trees directionally. So we'll be taking them if they're facing west in the forest. When we replant them in, on Snape Hill, they're still going to be facing west. So there it seems it seems sort of pokey pokey, but it isn't. It's a proven science. They grow in a certain direction and they're happiest that way. We're going to make them happy. So our job is to make them happy for the first couple of years. And their job is to make us happy for the rest of their lives. So that's the plan here. And to be honest with you, there I don't think any half measure is acceptable. It has to be robust and it has to be all in. And these trees are going to be a wonderful feature for all of our little kids, all the way up to the university students, these kids are brilliant. I'm so looking forward to working with them. They're fourth year students, they're in forestry, they're, they're in horticulture. They're, they're bright kids. I'm so delighted for them to be able to share with us their knowledge and be able to come back. Can you imagine that 50 years from now, these students come back and these trees are now 50 feet tall. It's a pretty neat legacy for them. And all of our little kids, instead of taking it to scoops or roots or whatever, you can take it to snake shell <laughs> and let them throw rocks at each other. <laughs> thank you, uh, Councillor Dwyer. Well, I just I want to thank you for your dedication and uh, just the genius behind this project. So I look at it and you you use terms like hokey pokey and simplistic, and it seems uh, you know quite uh, complicated for me. Anyway, um, I like how everything is uh, rolled out and. Um, you know, this promotes community health on so many levels, and uh, that's something I subscribe to. So, uh, again, congratulations and thank you for bringing this forward to us. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Mayor Ireland. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Hall. Um, and thank you, uh, Mr. Prochette. Um, I will say to begin that reducing your presentation by 75% was 100% effective. <laughs> uh, you made some some really interesting astute connections. Um, water is critical. Uh, we had an experience um, through CN Eco Connections with planting Douglas fir along the town trail at least on the town, and it was marvelously successful. I think a hundred percent. Um, of those trees were maintained. That was probably a consequence primarily of the fact that they were watered um, by a drip system underground. And the water, of course, was critical because even at, at that time, although the heat film was not as significant as it was last year, um, we had some hot weather and all of those trees, I think were 125, survived. They were much larger trees too, but they were not the the small ones that you mentioned that that's not so. However, um, just thinking about the, the importance of water and same time the importance of overwatering in some circumstances. Um, I wonder if any thought has been given, and again, this might be something that you reference CN, we might 
potential to come up with some, some money if there's money involved. But I wonder whether a gravity feed system overground, a drip system overground from your tank at the top of the hill might be an effective solution. Um, because I, I respect that having community members come out and take pails is a community engagement um, benefit that can't be matched elsewhere. But in terms of the health of the trees, um, a systematic watering system, a drip system running out of gravity from the tank that we organized, but overground because we're not going to dig up um, a historical site. But is that a possibility? Has it been contemplated, or is it too late in the game to think about um, such a measure? Um, thank you, Bernardo. Um, I, there's the, the logistics of how we're going to get the water to the trees is something. I mean, I, 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 I hate to use the word holistic, but there is a holistic element to this. Um, the tree, these trees, are going to be planted without the benefit of any additional soils. Parks Canada's restoration uh, crew program are decidedly nervous about in introducing any kind of auxiliary soils to the, to the trees. And because that is first, first of all, grow in rocky soil and they, they feel it's not necessary. So any worry about overwatering, I think, will, will not happen because it's, it's very rocky there. Uh, in terms of running any infrastructure overground, that there hasn't been any discussion of that, other than um, the possibility of the tank at the top and having, say, uh, fire hoses running down to, say, four locations on the hill, or three locations, where the, 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 the pails could be refilled. Um, I don't know how the historical wing of Park Standard would feel about that kind of infrastructure. Um, it's, I guess it's a discussion that should be had, and it, would, it will be had. I think we don't want to make the watering end of it to become so complicated that it's going to, it's going to take more longer to set up the infrastructure than to actually water the trees. I, you know, I think realistically, uh, 10 people in the course of a week would augment any kind of extra needs that the uh, the trees would need the, now the the, the uh, restoration crew will be monitoring these this journal and the watering journal and the the condition of the trees throughout the summer until the fall. So at this juncture, I don't I don't perceive there being an issue. Um, clearly, uh, it's it, it, this is a project in in, in flux. It's it's something that we're going to see, and at the end of the day, this is a study of we're going to see how they do. Uh, and it's a perfect spot for them that the different elements of the uh, of the, uh, the different topography is very interesting up there. Thank you for that. If, if I may, um, then I would like to propose a motion. Um, and that is that committee recommend that council accept the presentation of Mr. Prochet with thanks and that council direct administration to offer appropriate municipal support to the Snakesville reforestation project proposal. I've left that intentionally vague, which is against my nature, but I'm not sure uh, exactly what the end result might be and, and what would be um, best practice as we move forward. So I will leave the appropriateness of municipal support to a combination of input from administration and project designers. And, and I'm, I'm sure that they will find the best path forward, whether it's fire trucks filling tanks or otherwise, but the, the general nature of the motion is intended um, to be very grateful um, for the presentation, Mr. Prashad and as supportive as we can be within, within the context of this being um, historical uh, cultural site as well. So thank you very much for the, for the presentation. Thank that you. is our motion. Uh, Councilor Wilson. 
Yeah, I re really appreciate that motion and like the the ability to be flexible in that motion. Um, although maybe just a note to administration, maybe we can get uh, one point person to work with uh, Mr. Prashet rather than who you know just you know the office department. So so if uh, uh, Mr. Prashet could work directly with. Uh, Mr. Greathead, um, or have him as that contact person. I, you know, I don't want to direct too much, but uh, just so he has one person to get in touch with, then it could be you. Uh, but you might just delegate that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Any other comments or debate on that motion? Let's see any hands up. I want to thank you as well. Um, I love this project it's on my street. <laughs> But trains and trees. I even see you know, out of school care or summer fun, maybe adopt a plot or walking down there every few days. It's a really, really great thing. I, I really like it. Uh, there is a motion on the table. Um, I will call the question. All in favor with the maybe amendments? Will those be amendments or just okay? All in favor of the motion? And that is carried. Thank you very much. And, Appreciate uh, your time. Councilor Wilson. I uh, just w wanted to speak a little bit more to future years and uh, not, you know, we, I guess we don't have to put a motion forward today, but uh, I think um, in my mind, uh, the municipality would be open to working with your group as well as, you know, in, in the future, maybe we could start a working group for the St. Hill uh, re re uh, restoration um, and uh, work towards. Uh, Fundraising, etc., for benches, plaques, uh, all of what you spoke to uh, early, earlier. But I think at this juncture, support in the short term. And then uh, again, I think there is overwhelming support for long term uh, as well. If I could just say uh, thank you so much for your time. And, and uh, Mark, May 20, May 12th on your calendars. and. It'd be marvelous. You're all welcome to come down and and run a shovel if you like, or just come by and have a look. I'm going to uh, supply enough caffeine and simple sugars to <laughs> drive a teenager out of their mind. So I'll be love to see you, each and every one of you. Uh, and it's uh, I say it's a community it's a community project that belongs to all of you. And uh, there's a lot more going on that that could really make it a special special project for years and years to come. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, moving on to agenda item seven, new business. 7.1, Mountain Makers Arts and Culture. I see Mr. Reed has joined us via Zoom. And I handing it over to you, Mr. Reed. With a fresh haircut, it looks like. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Hall, and to the council. Uh, that is correct. I'm here with the Mountain Makers Art and Culture uh, update from your director. Uh, the recommendation is that committee receives this community development director update report on the Mountain Makers presentation and the relationship between municipality and local nonprofit organizations for information. And of course, the option uh, that council could um, offer other information or amendments as you see fit. Um, the background uh, on July 27th, 2021, council received a public presentation from Selena Frisson and Sabrina Doyle of Mountain Makers regarding the challenges and opportunities in the arts and culture sector in, sec sector in Jasper. The presentation included a clear request Mountain Makers works with the municipality to find equally accessible inclusive space that legally complies with the need to reside rules. Additionally, Ms. Frisson and Ms. Doyle presented the following value statements that there would be balance, more balanced resources spread between recreation and culture, more collaboration, finding a space that would allow uh, more participation, transparency, a material strategy and corresponding budget for arts and culture, and attention and increase in acknowledgement from council. After the presentation, council passed the following motion, uh, number 325 of 21, that Councilor McGrath, that committee direct administration to come back to a future committee, the whole meeting with a report to follow up on the request made in the presentation. Um, subsequently, and in addition, on September 14th, 2022, administration provided a report summarizing the relationship between Jasper community team 
Society, or JCTS, and the municipality of Jasper. While that item was initially focused on the Jasper community team and friends of Jasper Culture and Recreation, subsequent discussions resulted in council passing the following motion, number 386 of 21, uh, Councillor McGrath again directed uh, or, or motioned that committee direct administration to bring forward recommendations on how to enhance the relationship between the municipality and local nonprofit organizations, including the Jasper Community Teen Society and Friends of, Culture, of Jasper Culture and Recreation. As the relationship with our nonprofit service providers, such as Habitats for the Arts, or uh, It Only Takes a Dream, directly relates to both of these motions, administration has been engaging in conversations and establishing relationships over the past few weeks to collaboratively develop a path forward to address both motions in concert. And by way of discussion, this update report is, is intended purely to give council and residents the current status of these two motions and the work involved and invite council comments for focusing administrative efforts and to show the projected timelines for uh, resolution, whatever that may look like. And so the following plan slash timeline is presented for council. Uh, in April, uh, many initial meetings uh, to, dis to understand the context. Uh, in May, uh, we've projected to have certainly some quick wins. So we definitely already have an open and collaborative dialogue created with several local nonprofit champions. Um, we're working on uh, Share Your Passion program development. And just a bit of background on Share Your Passion, what we're working towards is uh, the idea that should a resident or group of residents Ha, uh, see a gap in the community in service development or service or, or program development that uh, they would be able to find an easy pathway to connecting their passion and what they might like to bring to what the municipality can offer by way of infrastructure or support. Um, we are also looking at the facility booking fee structure and, and looking at streamlining that and, and creating some process clarity in concert, I suppose, with Share Your Passion, but also just straight up things like uh, an easy example is there is no sort of drop-in rate existing right now for the multipurpose hall. Um, so there's a, a way that it, it, we can easily streamline that, that space access to make it more used throughout the, the days and, and weeks and years. Um, and we are working on an existing community spaces invent inventory rather, so that we will be able to describe uh, clearly what options we have for people, certainly when they try to share their passions. Um, we've had several initial meetings uh, as listed in April, but some of the meetings that have yet to happen are Jasper Artist Guild, Friend of, Friends of Culture and Recreation, um, and others to come. Um, the follow-up meetings to further develop the plan and partnership. And then in June, we look to have uh, relationship agreement drafts um, and these relationship agreements are, um, you know, we're very, very common over here in community development. We have uh, what are called funding agreements or partnership agreements or relationship agreements with uh, certainly funders, uh, with partners. And what we want to drive uh, from this process is uh, clarity and transparency so that we would all know exactly who's doing what in the zoo, so to speak. Uh, with each of these partners. Um, and there may be policy change drafts uh, that as needed if, if we come across areas where policy is needing to be modernized to support this kind of work. And then advocacy and operational positions developed in regards to that need to reside um, item that was mentioned uh, by uh, Selena and Sabrina that how do we uh, facilitate artists in our community and what that looks like yet is still uh, vague. And then, you know, towards the end of summer, we'll get those agreements signed, um, which would uh, enable the release of financial contributions as appropriate, according to the terms as described in those agreements, um, and any final policy changes. There is, of course, some strategic relevance, uh, governance and social equity, develop and nurture mutually beneficial relationships and partnerships, uh, governance and social equity, improve communications, information sharing with the community, organizational health review and evaluate committee and board roles, structures and responsibility. Yeah. I, I didn't mention, and I'll just throw it in quickly that of course, one of the big drivers uh, of all of this work is to uh, connect our community with our facilities certainly and increase the usage of same. So 
Um, that strategic relevance is, is not listed per se, but that is definitely one of our main goals. And we are projecting that there are no extra costs uh, outside of existing budget to respond uh, as, as described above. And uh, I'm open to questions uh, from council. Thank you very much, Mr. Reed. Uh, Councilor Dakota. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the uh, follow-up on um, the presentation and uh, the steps that are going forward. Um, I don't have any questions, but um, if this was already referenced, I apologize for the repetition here, but in the background, uh, the re there's a reference made to September 14th of 2022, and I believe that should be 2021. I know there's a lot of 2022s in there. So uh, thank you for that, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Hall, through to Councillor Demota. You are correct. That's a typo that I will take responsibility for and correct uh, for the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to be concerned about uh, the point uh, advocacy and operational positions developed in regard to the need to reside. Uh, in relation to artists in the communities. What what does this really entail? It is a pretty big uh, topic to unpack. And uh, um, let's say we tread around that one pretty lightly at this point. Uh, certainly, Deputy Mayor Hall, through to Councilor Wilson. Uh, absolutely, you are 100% correct that, that uh, it's very nebulous even to me right now, um, but it, it was uh, part of the presentation and there are certainly some opportunities that that perhaps we can all brainstorm even today but that's why that item has some time ahead of it so that we can get on the right side of it and make sure that any you know maybe the position statement is simple and straightforward and, and we get it out really quickly but maybe it is nuanced and maybe there's some flexibility with some creative programming that can allow us to assist artists in meeting that. We don't know what that looks like yet, but you're, you're absolutely right that it will take uh, some concerted effort and care and attention. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Mr. Gannon, can you follow this up? Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Hall. Just to supplement uh, what Director Reed was saying, uh, certainly advocacy is the domain of council. Um, and one of the things that came across from the presentation that they explicitly said was that there was a uh, a concern that it was a challenge to be a working artist in the municipality. I think we'll appreciate that uh, having uh, opportunity for uh, need to reside to be satisfied by just being a working artist. We might see a flood of quote unquote working artists moving to Jasper. Um, that said, uh, there may be the potential for Parks Canada to create a, a limited number of opportunities for working artists to, to qualify as need to reside. So uh, I think that that was the initial concept that they raised. Um, but certainly advocacy is, is council domain. If council wanted us to get more information about that or create a proposal about what that could look like, so council could choose to advocate on that issue or not. Um, that's something that uh, Director Reed and I can support council with. But it is, um, as you say, this isn't broadly the need to reside. It's a very sort of narrow consideration of this one particular issue. And I think the uh, view from the presenters was that you know if you are a working artist in order to live in Jasper, you need to have some other job. It says I'm allowed to live in Jasper, right? Um, and I think it's an open question for council of whether there might be a different approach um, that would allow somebody to focus on their practice uh, with their full time, um, but that would have to be balanced off with creating sort of an open invitation to anybody who happened to buy a set of paints and call themselves a working artist, right? Um, and that would only be publicity and uh, collaboration with Parks Canada. So I think that's the concept there. Um, and if council wished administration to do some background work to provide you some insight into that, so that you could choose whether or not you want to advocate on that issue. I think that's the, the direction that administration um, is considering in director of this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Um, I'm going to go to Mayor Ireland next. Yeah, send it. Councilor Mullick, Councilor Mullick. Thank you, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reed, uh, for the report. I have um, some brief comments and then some, some questions. Um, firstly, I, I really do appreciate um, the focus on strategic relevance. I think it is critical that we align decision-making with 
the overall strategic plan and council and um, CAO and directors just spent time last week um, refreshing their focus on strategic priorities. Um, so I, I think it's really important that this be part of the report. Um, I, I would simply add that um, this is such a holistic endeavor that, that it can be attached to other items of strategic relevance. Um, looking through our, our existing document under organizational health, you might also have mentioned a priority of, of council, which continues to be our priorities until we change them, uh, to conduct a review of recreation and cultural programming services and opportunities. And certainly this fits within that. I also think it fits within economic health and fiscal equity. I, I know that part of the presentation last July was really focused on the equitable use of facilities and that's embedded in this. And that equity part is, is really important to our strategic priorities. So I thank you for recognizing that. I do have some questions about the report. Um, firstly, the meetings, I, I'm unsure whether those initial meetings that are referenced are one-off meetings with each of the groups or whether they are combined meetings. Uh, it seems to me there's potential here that there are many um, cultural and artistic focus groups in the community that are missing from that list. So it's a consideration as to how open that ought to be. I also wonder whether um, when we get down to June, um, in the relationship agreement drafts that are presented, whether that in fact presupposes some of the outcomes of the efforts in April and May. So we start with a very much longer list of uh, initial um, groups with whom to have meetings and then come down to quite a, a smaller number of groups um, in respect to those that you would anticipate drafting relationship agreements. So it, I just wonder whether there's too much um, presupposing and whether it could be more open-ended. And that leads to, that's really my only question of all of this, is has um, the department considered filtering all of this through the lens of community conversations? I appreciate the work that's being done, but at about the time of the motions that are referenced, that is uh, July 27th, when we initially heard from Mountain Makers, Council made a motion in September of 2021, there was another motion. Sometime in that same time frame, there was a motion for Council to proceed with community conversations. And one of them is an arts and culture community conversation. And it seems to me that there might be an avenue here to really work to enhance those community conversations by filtering this process through that lens rather than having one-offs directly between representative groups and uh, municipal administration. So I, I just put that out there as to whether or not um, we have considered the role that community conversations might play, particularly in this instance, but overall, I, I feel that we have an obligation to enhance the use and the effectiveness of those community conversations. And this, I think, would be a real opportunity to do that. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Mr. Reed? Yes, uh, thank you, oh, Deputy okay. Mayor Hall, through to Mayor Ireland. Um, okay, so uh, going backwards, I will uh, jump all over your uh, reference to community conversations. Um, very, of course, very appropriate comment. And I will say that much of the work uh, is supported by community conversations. Certainly the original Mountain Makers presentation uh, actually began at community conversations, just the concept and discussions. Um, and so community conversations as a, a perhaps adjunct to this process or support to this process is ongoing. Um, and, uh, Going backwards, one more question. Uh, the idea of one-offs, um, this is definitely part of the orientation of your new director uh, to get uh, the lay of the land and, and who's who in the zoo. Um, so 
using community conversations as one method, also uh, certainly diving deeper on individual meetings, uh, I guess a one-two punch there. And uh, the presupposition point is well heard. Um, and the point about, you know, why are these groups specifically listed? This, uh, I should have made more clear, is a recommended or a, a sort of a sampling. This is where the initial work of your new director arriving has been focused uh, because, you know, this is clearly uh, a priority of, of both council administration and, and the community. Um, again, based on what we're hearing at Community Conversations. So I, I, I appreciate every one of those points and questions. And uh, if you could read my mind, you would see that they were all included and that perhaps some more detail on, on the generality and, and a, a representative sampling rather than a closed list. And so I really appreciate you bringing that forward. Did I answer those three though? That's a, that's a tough road to, to get three questions in one. Did I do all right? You did very well, thank you. I, I, I just, oh. You did very well, thank you. I, I am still um, left though wondering um, as this unfolds in whatever format, um, whether, whether um, strict or, or more broadly focused, whether there is an intent to continue to use um, the community conversation model because I think not just in arts and culture, but overall, um, council is committed to a different approach using community input through that context. And uh, I would like us, well, I would like to know that, that we as an organization are going to make full use of that opportunity to engage the community through community conversations rather than um, anybody subverting that, or maybe that's not quite the right word, but, but circumventing the community conversations to go straight to um, municipal administration. I think it, it works better from a community perspective. I think it also works better from an administrative perspective that you use the filter of community conversation. So if that is the plan, I'm, I'm very happy to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Mr. Gibbon, has some follow-up. Sure, thanks very much, uh, Mayor Hall. Uh, Mayor Ireland, uh, I know uh, Director Reed and his team are very committed to community conversations. I expect that they'll fully do that in terms of community engagement. Just wanna make a bit of a distinction. Um, a number of these organizations are ones that we have some kind of direct relationship with. And so uh, as uh, stewards of the public purse and of uh, public assets, uh, we have a, a need to have some direct one-on-one -on -one relationships from time to time. So I think Mr. Reed is, in his orientation, as he referenced, is establishing those one-to-one -one relationships uh, with a number of these organizations, obviously the library, uh, JAG, uh, Have the Pat, are all tenants of a public facility, others we have funding agreements with or we've made financial contributions to. And so those would be, a, those relationships or that relationship management and stewardship uh, would obviously be most appropriate or really only appropriate in a one-to-one -one relationship and not through the form of community conversations. I think that's generally what Director Reed is, is talking about. I think additionally, um, he and his team are very committed to ensuring that conversation about uh, arts and culture and recreation are happening in community conversations. So there's that opportunity for cross-pollination and uh, collaboration to emerge. Um, and I think Mr. Reed is taking a really good focus on establishing uh, a direct and appropriate uh, relationship between the municipality and the organizations that we have some kind of um, uh, organizational entanglement with, whether that's, uh, as I said, leasing or financial contributions or whatever. So there's two different levels. And I think Mr. Reed has got a plan that falls up on both those levels. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Melnick. Thank you, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. And thank you, um, Mr. Reed and Mr. Gibbon for some clarifying comments, um, which help to perhaps uh, clarify something in my mind, Mr. Gibbon, for, to arts, culture and recreation, which is probably answering my question as to why the skate park group was in this grouping in the April meetings, but it sounds like other more recreation oriented groups would be part of 
meetings as well. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that it's, it's not just focused with the skate park group, but other, other whether it be the volleyball um, or other sport groups that use our facilities. Um, one acronym, though, that I'm confused about, that we use them always in documents. In the, in the initial meetings in May, we referenced the JPCA. And for the life of me, I can't find any reference anywhere to JPCA. I don't know what it is. Uh, certainly, uh, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall through to Councillor Melnick. My apologies. Uh, so Jasper Park Cycling Association. So with, with that work that they are ongoing um, in relation to uh, the bike park specifically, um, but uh, that, that's what that one stands for. My apologies for not listing it. Thank you for that clarity. And again, it just reinforces what the reference was to other groups and recreation that we are supporting. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Melnick. Uh, Councillor Devota. Well, I appreciate uh, the items that uh, the mayor and, and Mr. Melnick, uh, Councillor Melnick, I guess, because um, that sort of my point by 75 percent. <laughs> Um, I just, I just wanted to thank you, that Deputy Nero. Um, I just, I, I like the fact that you know there's, there's making some reference here to me to reside, and that you know through my time living in Jasper here, um, you know having friends that have moved here in the community, um, and and having the understanding that they came here with you know some specific skills. There are a lot of uh, university programs, high level degrees that you get fine arts and uh, music as an example. And you come here and, and if you want to survive as an artist in any way, it, it's very difficult. So what defines active employment in the community? I think that the, the more that we uh, address that, uh, you know, we're, we're a community first. I know that we serve a higher purpose in, in so many areas, uh, particularly tourism, but, um, you know, it's um, movements like this are, are very important to the foundation of what we're here. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Any other comments or questions from Council for Mr. Reed? I don't see any hands. Is there a councillor willing to just make a recommendation? Uh, Mayor Ireland? I, I'm prepared, but I do have question, the, the recommendation that comes to us is that committee receive the report. Is, is the intent that it be received by committee or that committee recommend council receive the report? It, it, it is written clearly. I just want to make sure that that's the intent. Acting Deputy Mayor of Councilor Hall, just get all the pieces in there uh, for his worship. Uh, and I think, Your Worship, uh, this is an example of the type of thing the administration uh, made a presentation to the committee about ongoing work with the municipality. Uh, there's no financial requirements requested or bylaws or policy changes that are needed to let the council get council application. So we're very comfortable with uh, the committee essentially acknowledging that this work is being done. We heard you, administration. Thank you very much. So that's why I can stay here rather than forward up to council. Thank you, uh, Mr. Given. With that, then I'm prepared to make the motion that committee receive the community development director update report on the Mountain Makers presentation and the relationship between the municipality and local nonprofit organizations for information. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Let's see. Hands on that one. I will call question. All in favor? And that information is received. Moving on to item 7.2, the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority Governance and Administrative Plan. I'll pass it over to Mr. Gibbon. Thanks, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Uh, council in front of you, you will see a recommendation that uh, is intended to go up to council. Uh, that committee recommend council approve the uh, West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority and Management Agreements as presented. Uh, they are attached to the council package along with the 2014 agreement uh, that is being proposed to be, uh, to be superseded by the new agreement. 
Um, the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority is obviously a long-standing part of uh, operations. Uh, the West Yellowhead Jasper joined in 2014. That was the most recent addition to that entity, uh, which also consists of Yellowhead County, the town of Edson, and the town of Edson, um, and essentially operates the municipal solid waste disposal system on lands that are located just west and adjacent to the town of Edson. On August 3rd of last year, past council provided support of principal for the concept of the authority transitioning to a commission. Uh, since that time, the, C the CAOs across the region uh, have reviewed the situation and recommended uh, some time ago to the authority board that the transition to the commission be paused so that uh, what was in the administrative perception, uh, a more pressing issue of the actual ongoing management support for the authority, uh, that that needed to be addressed before uh, making that transition to a commission. So the board of the authority uh, supported that recommendation from the combined CAOs. Um, and this is the next step along that path to ensuring the stability of the uh, management support for the uh, authority. Uh, historically, the town of Hinton has provided the, op the uh, administrative and financial management support uh, to the authority. Uh, they uh, indicated that they no longer had the desire or the capacity to act in, in that role. Um, and for some time, the uh, authority had engaged uh, Bernie Kreiner, uh, who's acting as a consultant, uh, to provide that administrative support. Uh, Mr. Kreiner <coughs> had informed the board that he was going to be um, shutting down his practice and would be filling in, uh, able to fill in that role. And that's really left a gap to the administration of the authority. And discussion, the CAOs. Um, identified that uh, it was necessary to better define the roles and responsibilities that went along with the, the obligations of, of filling that role. Uh, and that there were a number of different ways to, to sort of fill that gap that was left by uh, Hinton uh, choosing, choosing not to fill that role. Um, we identified that it obviously could be put out uh, to market to see if there was somebody, a contractor that we could bring on to do that as we had uh, with Mr. Kreiner. Um, or other entities, um, or a one of the partners could take on the role. Um, West, sorry, Yellowhead County had uh, offered to do so um, with the understanding that there needed to be more definition. I think it was very challenging uh, in all fairness to Hinton because if you look at the 2014 agreement, it really outlined how the board would be established and all what the roles, responsibility of the administrative support would be. So in front of you, you see a refreshed agreement <laughs> for the establishment uh, of the uh, of the authority, um, which is uh, essentially supersedes the 2014 agreement, which is when Jasper joined, um, and really defines what the authority is, how its meetings will happen, and uh, you know finances for the authority, liability, indemnity, insurance, and, uh, dispute resolution between the partners. So that really is the partnership agreement. That aligns and how the authority itself will run. There are some minor updates in the 2014 agreement, but uh, the practical matters within it are essentially the same. Um, no significant changes in membership being proposed or anything else. Um, although there is a specific discussion about how new members may be brought on, uh, because the MD of Greenview uh, has endorsed becoming a member, and there's a process that will need to be followed. The, the agreement is essentially a continuation of modernization of the 2014 partnership agreement, um, establishment agreement. <clears throat> the additional agreement in front of you is the management agreement um, that is intended to serve as the agreement between uh, the partner municipalities uh, that form the authority and the authority between a manager. Uh, and so you can see that this could be applied uh, whether we have an independent contractor or some organization. Or one of the partner municipalities. Um, in this case, uh, Yellowhead County has offered to take on that role, and this uh, agreement um, defines the responsibilities of uh, the, the manager, uh, how you know, the length of the agreement, uh, termination, pauses, payment, dispute resolution, everything else. So essentially saying uh, we have one agreement uh, that is modernized for the establishment of the authority, and then we have a proposed management agreement between the authority. And a manager. Uh, and so those are the two documents that are in front of you. Um, all of the partner municipalities are actually viewing these two documents today. Uh, they're all being presented today with the intention of going forward to uh, all of the municipal councils the following week. Um, 
months are all in the same schedule. Uh, this has been reviewed by uh, RMRF um, in terms of the development of both of the documents. Um, and administration recommends that committee recommend council approve uh, the documents as presented. I'm open to any questions that I want. Thank you, Mr. David. Uh, Mayor Irons. Thank you, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall, and thank you, Mr. Given. Uh, Councillor Wilson and I sit on um, the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority Board. Um, so we have some familiarity with this, um, and both of us have served, I think, since 2017 on this board. It has been challenging uh, to get to this point, as Mr. Given indicated in the report. Um, quite recently, there was a motion from the board to transition to a commission. Um, the CAOs then got involved and um, provided advice that it was too early. Um, had um, this gone differently, I, I think I would have been content um, with an updated agreement as a final solution to the struggles that we've had um, rather than the commission. So I'm, I'm inclined personally um, to go this route, that is um, update the agreement. It is going to all councillors, or pardon me, to all councils, um, and then back to the board. But, and I, I regret that a couple of matters did not um, make their presence sufficiently known in my mind earlier on. And having read in preparation for today's um, presentation to council, it, I am inclined to um, make the motion suggested, um, but rather than as presented with some proposed amendments to the agreement. And if I may, I take the time to take Council through my concerns. Um, paragraph 23 of the agreement provides that, and this is just with respect to, to budget, but if anybody, um, any member disputes the budget, then we follow the dispute resolution process, and that dispute resolution process um, is clarified in later provisions. Under section 40 of the proposed agreement, the way I read that is that at the end of the dispute resolution, effectively the authority becomes a requisitioning authority. And that means that our own budget to some extent is out of our hands. It's like a requisition that we would get from Evergreens or from the province for, uh, for school tasks. And I'm not sure that that's really the intent that any council advocate its budget responsibility um, to the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority Board. I mean, it, it, of course, it's going to be small and relative terms, but the way I read that is that um, a dissenting member would, at the end of the dispute resolution process, be required to accept a budget that has implications on a municipal budget that is determined by arbitration. That, to me, does not really sit well, and I'm not sure that all councils or all councillors have really considered that. Um, there are similar provisions, although not with budget, in respect to um, the same or related issue that appear under section 45 and 46, um, and that is withdrawal. And so if we enter this under section 45, if we want out, we can't get out, nor can anybody else, without unanimous consent of all the municipalities. So we enter an agreement and all of us now are bound. And there, there are two clauses there, 45 and 46, that both require unanimity 
which, when flipped on its head, gives each municipality a veto. Again, I'm not sure that we've really considered what that means. And particularly in section 45, you need unanimity to wind up. Do you need unanimity to transition to a commission, for example, which was the goal here anyway? And the, the board has worked on the basis of majority uh, votes. And I'm not sure that we are all inclined to change that so that any one member would in fact have a veto power. So those are those are concerns that I have with respect to it. And I, I'm open to um, any discussion that council wants to have on that. Um, but I would propose um, that at the end, uh, I would be inclined to make a motion in the terms of the recommendation that rather than um, the words at the end as presented um, to recommend in principle but subject to taking those points for discussion at the board level so that it is clear that all the member municipalities have an opportunity to turn their minds to those particular questions and that is um, control over your own budget and um, the unanimous slash and veto power that is embedded in those sections. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Councilor Lloyd, did you? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, in under the current agreement, uh, under in Appendix A, Schedule A, um, there's some um, references um, made for the duties of the, the manager. And Number Three refers to the regional waste reduction and diversion program operations at the time that was it says currently suspended with no new initiatives being pursued um i'm just wondering if there's an appetite from this council and uh, the collective uh, to pursue any grant funding out there that we could use to look at um the efficiencies of uh diverting waste uh particularly in recycling uh, there are a lot of initiatives that have taken place um, where we don't know the end result of all our initiatives. And I'm talking about glass, plastic, um, and you know all these endeavors that take place in every community. And we still don't understand fully on uh, the outcome of all these products and where they go. And are we wasting our time doing all this? And I, I'm not sure if that falls in here, but. Uh, you know, if there is uh, some desire from all the communities to pursue, you know, what better opportunities there might be for what we're doing, um, I don't know where that would fall under the existing uh, agreement. And I was just wondering if there might be an opportunity to pursue efficiencies in regards to that. Does that make sense? Thank you, Councilor Wood. Uh, Mr. Gillen? Sure. Thanks very much. Uh, active and very helpful. First, I think uh, important to note that the uh, Schedule A that you're referencing that is attached as, as a part of the Appendix A is actually proposed uh, part of the new management agreement. So this is basically saying any manager that the authority would hire to conduct the operations of the authority should be able to do these things. And that's why they're you know, sort of what you would see in generally job descriptions. Just we did some work to say if we're going to hire an individual or a company, what would they generally be required to do? With what skills would we want them to have? So, um, just to be clear, that's not a part of the current uh, existing agreement, which is Appendix B. Um, that aside, I think Councilor Miller, your, your central point is really about waste reduction initiatives. Uh, my understanding is that the authority board um, is still committed to waste reduction initiatives. I know that Mr. Priner had done some work to identify uh, opportunities to conduct some, some discussion and waste reduction initiatives within, and Council Wilson or Mayor Ireland may know more of this detail, but there was some existing dollars that the authority had, and there was some discussion about how they might use this small amount of existing dollars 
towards waste, waste reduction initiatives. And I think there was some pretty certainly happening at the board level about that. So, um, and I know that the authority had had waste reduction as a major focus and intent behind the transition to emissions. So I think that the board is still committed to that. Um, I think that there there is a can, uh, from the administrative perspective, there's a need to take a little bit of a pause of the organizational change and creation of new initiatives to ensure that the organization itself is on stable footing. And none of that prevents the municipality of Jasper from independently identifying environmental initiatives that it wishes to pursue. So, Councillor Demoto, I think uh, uh, I think the board, Mayor Ireland, and, and Councillor Wilson will speak to this, uh, are still committed to waste reduction initiatives. Um, just saying, you know, at a high level, we're taking a bit of a pause there. Um, and uh, as Council discussed, there's two planning sessions, a certain opportunity for us to act independently in that area as well. Thank you, Mr. Yes, and I thank you for that, uh, Deputy Mayor Hall. And I apologize if I missed the uh, formalities in the beginning when, when you acknowledge me. And I uh, tend to forget thanking you. Um, so I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and, and I apologize for the confusion. I just, uh, from where the signatures are at the end of the piece, like it's it's kind of broken up in my mind. So I, I was having a little difficulty uh, following that. So I do appreciate that. and. You know, I know that, you know, the, the strategic relevance uh, under environmental responsibility does, uh, you know, um, give us the, the opportunity to review uh, garbage sewer and recycling and composting programs. Um, and I, you know, I, I think I was looking in the future for uh, an economy of scale here. And, and I think um, if, if that's still kind of the uh, intent, then, you know, I, I fully um, would support that. Um, just before I finish up, on the background piece of the beginning here, um, in the third paragraph, it says on August 3rd, 2021, Jasper Council Council provided support and principle. So I didn't know if that was just Jasper Council or, you know, Council Council. So um, a little bit of a typo there. I, I don't mean to be a stickler on that. I had to provide a little bit of light in the ones. Thank you, Councillor Demoda. Councillor Wilson was in queue and I will next. Councillor Wilson. Uh, yeah, it was just to um, go back to what uh, Mayor Ireland had identified and uh, I, I support his uh, his changes to to um, this agreement, although it, it would it be beneficial to um, split these up and approve the management agreement uh, to move forward with that uh, uh, in the meantime, as I think there is a bit of a timeline with uh, Mr. Kreiner uh, on the verge of retirement and actually past his retirement, there is the original retirement. Um, so I, th I think um, maybe there's benefit to approving the management uh, position agreement and then um, fine tuning the, uh, the authority agreement. Thank you, Council Wilson. Mayor Allen, would you speak to that? Well, in fact, I do. Um, <laughs> and I, I appreciate um, that suggestion and support. I, I think that is, it is critical that um, there be a manager in place, um, even as we might um, discuss the overall relationship um, changes in the municipalities. <laughs> but I, I accept that. That suggestion um, from Councillor Wilson with thanks. Um, but I had the hand up in back to respond to, <laughs> to Councillor Demota. Um, and I, I just invite you to take a look at um, what appears in our agenda as Appendix A, but it's not an appendix. It is the proposed new agreement. Um, and item 12A um, confirms the vision of the authority and it is to be a leader in regional waste reduction and um, to manage effectively the waste in West Yellowhead region. So if effective waste management uh, means we, we track where things are going, it's, it, it's part of the vision. So um, I think you might find comfort in that phrase in, in a proposed agreement that there there will be a focus on more than just 
um, managing landfill, it's managing waste overall with a focus on reducing waste to the extent we can. That provides me great comfort. Thank you. Councilor Wilson, then Councilor Sorry, just further to that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marilyn, but uh, with this new management agreement comes along as with a, a dedicated uh, staff, um, whereas prior to this, it was managed off of the desks of a few different people within the administration uh, of Hinton. So, I think uh, there would be more dedication into the, um, you know, of course, the management of the uh, landfill, but also of uh, diversion opportunities. Thank you, Councilor Wilson. Councilor Melnick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Hall, uh, I don't know if Mr. Gibbon wants to. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going through the appendix and I see we have the $100,000. And I just want to ask some questions for clarity, um, uh, either Mr. Gibbon or uh, Councillor Wilson and Mayor Ireland. The $100,000 is divided between the four. On an equal basis or by population? Yeah. If I may, thank you, uh, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Financial contributions are currently made based on the percentage of weight delivered to the landfill. Um, so it, I, I cannot recall what. Jas, which proportion is it seems to me that it's like 11 percent or something um, and that does not include parks canada waste because that is that is paid for separately um, and collected differently but anyway our our proportional share is not equal uh, we are not at 25 percent um, member just because there are four of us we pay based on, on weight um, it's workable, it has some challenges, particularly, I think, in terms of initiatives for waste reduction and recycling, because if you're successful um, in, a, in a reduction uh, program, you, you may see it in terms of, of some reduction in your cost, but it, it's not as easy to measure. But in any event, in short answer to your question, we pay based on volume. <coughs> Great. And, and just to follow up, I see that it's a five year agreement with no, um, in other words, it continues to be $100,000. There's no inflationary increase, there's no um, annual increase. At the, it's $100,000 over the five years. And I also read into this that within that $100,000, the manager needs to maintain all of the liability insurances as well or am i reading that incorrectly and will that become additional cost over and above the hundred thousand dollars divided between the partners well, mr Gaiman, that's that thanks very much i think that i think one thing that's important to point out is that the uh management agreement is between the authority and the uh, and the manager, and so it's not a not a direct relationship. You know that we will be invoiced specifically for that percentage as, as we are our Ireland aligned. I mean, ultimately we're responsible for a certain percentage of the total cost of the operation, um, but it will be up to the, to the board to decide. You know, do they want to fund this kind of cost out of existing reserves or out of you know a, a current contribution that they've asked for members to contribute to the proportion? So just to be a little bit. Um, Precise, um, but the management agreement doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be in the place for our 11% of the $100,000 um, because that would actually go to the authority and then the authority board will decide how they wish to pay that expense. So, just to clarify that. Um, additionally, I would uh, point out around the payment um, and it's good to show that you're showing a due consideration to one of our municipal neighbors that's proposing to act in that capacity. Um, if you look at uh, 6.1 under Article 6 payments, 
uh, it does identify that the authority, and again, this is the authority, not the individual constituent municipalities, but the authority of the manager to review in good faith such annual payments prior to the end of the first year of the term. Uh, there was an acknowledgement that we're not 100% certain that $100,000 is, is the right amount. There is an acknowledgement that you know, maybe it will take a little bit more work, maybe it'll take a little bit less. This is probably about the right amount, um, but we, uh, as administrators, acknowledge that you know, we, we, we need to run a year, see if that's enough, because we don't want to end up in a situation where the authority is under resourced in terms of administrative support. And the rest of us that are acting, you know, uh, trying to protect the interests of our, our spouses or partners, want to ensure that we weren't, you know, signing up for something that was too rich. Uh, so there's a commitment to reviewing that annual payment at the uh, end of the first term, sorry, first year, uh, and then there'd be an opportunity to say, okay, this looks like it's about right, or it needs to escalate by a certain amount, and then we bring that back uh, to that one, sorry, again, that would go back to the authority board, because again, this, that authority can manage a relationship rather than individual municipalities. Thank you, Mr. Gidden. I saw Council was had your hand up. Yeah, it probably doesn't need to be said, okay. but I was going to clarify that the manager is Yellowhead County, and not a, an actual position of the manager, but it says it right there. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Council Wilson. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, um, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Um, and, and I think this is you know, perhaps abundantly clear, but just to hammer the point home, um, our municipality as a member is responsible for our weighted share of the budget. The budget includes the $100,000 that goes to the manager, but the budget is a lot more than $100,000. But on occasion, there is a surplus, and if there is a surplus, we, the board decides what to do with it. But if it is to be returned, it is returned on the same weighted scale based on, on volume. So, um, the hundred thousand is simply the contractual obligation to the manager, um, and that's a contractual obligation of the authority, not of the municipalities, as Mr. Gibbon expressed. So I hope that it's all clear. I hope I haven't made it less clear. <laughs> no, thank you for that. But um, then, out of curiosity, I'll ask the question. Um, and I suppose it will come in our financial statements. Um, what our share was during the last budget year that we contributed to have this agreement. Uh, all appropriately spent money, but I think it'd just be good to know the number. Thank you, uh, Councilor Alec. Mr. Given, you did have your hand up earlier. I, I did. Okay, I, I question was going to okay. come up. Okay. <laughs> so, Debbie so, Rahal, uh, in, all, in all seriousness, I, I don't have that number at hand. Uh, Councilor Allen, like you're 100% correct as uh, a part of the regular process of our annual audit financial statements, Council received that information. Uh, so that will be presented. I'm sure uh, we could we could take that up uh, if necessary and respond, you know, provide it back by email to Council in advance of the audit financial statements going forward. So, so you'll see it in a couple slides and we don't want to call enough to draw that to you. Um, I did have my hand up uh, just to maybe go back to Mayor Ireland's earlier point around the dispute resolution if you could. And, and we're in a committee, so uh, you know, a little bit of discussion around that. Um, the mayor's is uh, plainly uh, correct in his interpretation of you know, the, what it actually says. I think that it, I'd like to propose something for council and the mayor to consider that the, the dispute resolution process is, is also specific that it lays out an escalation approach. Uh, basically says if, if the minister, if the board, if the constituent members of the board can't agree or there's some disagreement, it triggers this process, which first identifies that the issue should uh, go to the respective joint administrations. So uh, the board, and to use the financial example that the mayor outlined, uh, if one member objects, then this, what would happen practically is the CAOs would meet, say, okay, there's a issue here, uh, we're concerned about, you know, municipality A is concerned about the proposed increase um, and is objecting to the budget on that basis. Um, the administrator should hear that and see if there's any um, solution to that, uh, that we could advise the board. So, you know, acting as a, in, a, in a capacity of providing advice, administrative advice to the board, 
uh, that would be the first layer of dispute resolution. The second layer of dispute resolution, which if the administrators could come to some agreement that's workable that they could propose back to the board, would be that the issue would be referred to all of the constituent councils for discussion. So there'd be an administrative collaboration opportunity to see if the dispute could be resolved, if it could be resolved, sorry, resolved at the administrative level, and then it would escalate to the political level where the councils would have an opportunity to discuss, you know, review the issue, um, and see if there's an opportunity to resolve it. And if there was, then it would go to the arbitration clause. So it is true that a individual municipality could object to the budget. Um, and I'm not sure that a veto is exactly right, but it, an individual municipality could trigger this process. Um, the process that's laid out here has a number of steps. Again, administrative problem solving, that fails, political problem solving, and ultimately that fails, somebody needs to make a call, uh, and that does go to the arbitrator. So um, I don't know if that gives council you know, enough confidence that that process would enable, um, would, would enable any of the member municipalities to have appropriate influence to prevent this from becoming simply a requisition authority. Um, with a requisition authority, such as the uh, library board or evergreens, sorry, with, uh, evergreens, um, you know, we, we don't have that ability uh, to, to work that way. Um, the discussion about the budget happens at the board, our representative at the board would take forward municipality Jasper's concerns and the administration of evergreens would try to incorporate those concerns into the budget. I, I haven't looked in detail to this dispute resolution process there. Um, but from an administrative perspective, I'm quite comfortable. This is an appropriate process um, that would enable a really significant amount of, would require a significant amount of dialogue before getting to arbitration. It would bind into the member municipalities. Um, and uh, when it comes to the withdrawal, uh, it is interesting, uh, point 45, that there must be an announcement agreement to the municipalities to allow any municipality to withdraw. I think that that's there, there may be a better way of doing that, but if there was a municipality that was regularly dissatisfied with actions of the authority, that municipality has the right under the agreement to trigger the dispute resolution process. And I can do that, you know, uh, put this in a little bit of a lighter manner. If there was a municipality that was regularly, regularly dissatisfied uh, and Objecting to the direction the board was setting in budget or other matters and regularly triggering the dispute resolution process, it wouldn't be a surprise to me that everybody would be happy to provide them the opportunity to exit. So, you know, it it it, it is a bit odd, but it also does mean that a municipality can't unilaterally withdraw, which there could be some really significant challenges uh, for Jasper if Yellowhead County, um, you know, sort of or the town of Hinton chose to withdraw, uh, considering that they play, you know, some central roles in terms of management now proposed, um, and that the actual physical location. So, you know, that idea that there needs to be some common agreement, um, that though you can imagine how this would work in practice, uh, if somebody was regularly triggering dispute resolution, I think you'd have to have some hard to conversation about, do you really want to be here? And do we really want to be here? Uh, and, I think the agreement allows for that, but if there are some specific changes uh, that council wish to propose or the committee wish to propose, we could identify those here. Uh, we do have some time before this would be forwarded to the other councils, or sorry, to, before all councils forwarded this to their regular meetings. Um, I was intending to bring it for this type of discussion today with the intent of moving the formal uh, ratification of the following council meeting. It does give us an opportunity that there's some, some changes that need to be proposed. We have some space to do that. I will say it will also be challenging if every other municipality decides that they also have things that they want to propose for changes. Uh, you can imagine that if um, the other three also propose their own independent changes that we had to consider at our next council meeting in addition to ours, it can be challenging. It doesn't mean that we can't do it. It doesn't mean that it's not worth doing. It just means that we have to recognize that this may mean that uh, this comes might be challenging to conclude at our next regular council. 
a bit of discussion in the context of the community. Thank you, Mr. Given. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Uh, I do appreciate um, that level of discussion. This is committee, and that's what we should be doing. Um, and it, just to clarify, my concern is not so much with um, Section 40. And I, I appreciate the escalation clause, and so there are lots of opportunities to resolve disputes before you get to arbitration. But I think I began my earlier comments with reference to section 23, which specifically says that if anybody votes against the budget, that goes to arbitration, or at least that goes to the dispute resolution process. Does that imply that every time there's a split vote, it is a dispute that goes to the dispute resolution process? Earlier in the agreement, um, it is clear that we vote, um, and I think it is at least implied, if it's not expressly stated, that the majority of votes um, carries the day. So I'm not sure why the budget itself should be singled out as something where, if there is not unanimous approval of the budget, it goes to dispute, which could escalate to an arbitrator determining something which then I, I feel amounts to a requisition and I, I'm just concerned about that. But I, I appreciate that others might be reading this as well, coming up with their own um, nitpicky <coughs> arguments, um, but this is mine. And uh, all I'm suggesting is that uh, we at least have an opportunity to discuss the meaning of these related clauses at the board level to make sure that all are in favor. And I would be prepared to say that the collective will of the board is that this works. Um, then um, we are, if we agree to be a member of the authority, then we're subject to the rules. And that's all right. But I'd like to have the discussion first is all I'm saying. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Mr. Biden. Exactly. Mayor so, Mayor Ireland, I wonder, and, and Council, I wonder if on point 23, is it important to distinguish that, that this is talking about the municipalities rather than the municipalities' representatives at the board? Mm -hmm. so, so, at the board, uh, when the board is debating and establishing the budget for the operation of the authority, the majority vote will carry the day. But that budget is not final until approved by the member municipalities. So the, so the board could, just think about that, the board could have a disagreement uh, where members of the board uh, are voting against the budget for whatever reason, but the budget carries at the board level because there's a majority support for it. Um, that budget would then be forwarded to the member municipalities, which is who I think 23 and, and those other points you're talking about is actually constituent municipalities get a chance to review the financial statements and the board's proposed budget. The the member municipalities can object then trigger the dispute resolution. So this does not um, curtail the sort of appropriate you know consensus uh, sort of majority decision of voting uh, at the board level. It does mean though that if there's one municipality who is objecting to the budget as proposed by the board, then you enter this new resolution process. And again, I think we can all think of uh, how that might work in, in under the most challenging circumstances. If you have a, a member uh, at the board level who votes against the budget because that's potentially the will of their council, or it might not be, um, but you know, votes against the budget at the board level, the board approves the budget, their council either supports that authority rep you know, that representative at the authority by saying yes we also disagree with the budget so it was you know or their council says oh no we actually support the budget it was only our one representative that didn't support the budget but again you know and then all the process from there so i think that distinction between uh disagreement which is saying what responsibility and rights the municipal constituent municipalities have independent of their roles on the board as uh, represents the board table. 
Thank you, Mr. Good and Councillor Demota. I was going to ask the viewers at home if you got all that. Um, <laughs> complicated layers. I think I wrap my head around it, but I appreciate that you know the um, the walkthrough of that definition. So that, that helped me out. A little bit mind bending, but I, I understand where you're coming from. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Other questions from council? So it's no sign that you make a motion. <laughs> well, uh, I'm after that. This uh, after uh, Mr. Given had uh, shed a bit more light on it, and you can scroll back up to paragraph 17. Um, I think that suggests that once the authority has voted on the budget. It gets submitted to the municipalities and you know in turn carries on to uh, paragraph 23 which uh, Maryland had the issue with but I think as it's as suggested municipalities rather than the authority and I think that clarifies enough for me to be comfortable with moving forward on both of these today but I'd love to wait for comment from Mara. Is there a comment? Thank you. There is. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate um, that nuance, and I'm, I'm looking for some clarity in the document, and I, and I don't, I don't find it. Um, but I would perhaps be content and to approve a principle subject to a change simply in item 23 to say that in the event that one or more of the councils of member municipalities withhold approval. That seems to be the suggestion that Mr. Given um, says can be read into that clause, but uh, I find the word municipalities throughout the document. Mm -hmm. And I have to say it does not mean council it cannot be conceived, I think, to be construed as meaning council in many cases. It means it means members and the members are represented on the board and um, make certain decisions. But if if that is intended to say that when it gets back to council of a municipality, then that does change my concern. But I'm not yet satisfied. Perhaps I just need more time to, to read the document again. Clearly um, looking for that. It's a nice nuance. I'm just not sure that it's a necessary read of that section. It could be amended just slightly, I think, to say that it was limited to that objection by, by a council of a member of the municipality. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Mr. Gibbon? Uh, this is, I'm not sure if everybody's having as much fun as I am. But, um, Your Worship, the document doesn't have a definition section. As close as we get to that is in the first whereas, which defines what the municipalities are. So, would it maybe rather than getting into the points, maybe we could define, you know, in that first whereas, whereas the councils of Yellowhead, Hinton, Edson, and Jasper collectively the municipalities, because then it, it, it that is essentially acting as a definition section for the term municipality throughout the rest of the document, and it does make a distinction in that first whereas between the municipalities, which are the Councils, if we added that, of Yellowhead, Hinton, Edson, and Jasper. Um, and it is the councils who entered into the agreements and directed that. And it makes a distinction between those bodies and the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority or the authority. So that, that's as close as we get to a definition section of the document. And without suggesting we add a whole new layer of a definition section, maybe we can make that definition a bit more precise. Um, because it then would apply throughout the entire document rather than just adding the word um, in, in point seven, uh, in point, uh, sorry, 23. Um, that, that would make it clear that it's actually the councils of the member municipalities in every 
instance where we missed value is referenced. I don't want to be the guy that says that's what I was going to do, but I noticed that there weren't definitions in there. And I was thinking while you were saying that where could we address that? And I believe for me, I don't have a concrete, um, full understanding of where everything is in that document um, off the top of my head. But, you know, I, I'm not sure if that's going to cause any further confusion, but for me, um, it makes things a little bit clearer when it, when we reference municipalities. But now I'm guessing like in a document like this, should there be definitions or there other things that need to be addressed that might consequently go throughout the document? I'm not sure, but um, I like that direction, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Other comments or questions, or Councillor, please make a motion. Do you listen? Are you putting your head up, or are you just stretching? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Hall, and perhaps either um, Councillor Wilson or Mayor Ireland, Mr. Given. It, what's crucial from what I'm hearing is that the agreement to bring on the manager needs to be passed before the 1st of May, so we could probably break this into the two and then make recommendation on the agreement itself because um, that would have to be agreed to by the other partners as well, I would think. So that might be a way of moving forward to vote on the, uh, what I guess is known as Appendix A or the management agreement. Thank you, Councilor Malik. Councilor Wilson, uh, I guess uh, I would be willing to make a motion for the management agreement, but uh, first question would be to Mr. Given, do you see that being an issue with the other councils? Um, if we come back with only one motion of uh, approving the agreement and then maybe a, another motion from uh, Mayor Ireland about having to split them, is there any see issue with that? Uh, through Deputy Mayor Hall, uh, no council. So I think that these can be moved independently. I uh, appreciate that there may be some nuance or there may be some proposed revisions to the agreement between the municipalities, not being the constituent councils of the as valleys their partners. Um, but no, in all seriousness, there's no reason that we can't move independently. Appreciate that there may be some nuance that wants the council I want to add to the uh, the authority agreement. Uh, I don't see any problem. I think that effectively does the same thing. Speaking again, Council Wilson. Yeah, so uh, I can carry on then and uh, to move things forward. Short term vote. Um, <laughs> defer. Mayor <laughs> Allen. I think that we we can um, shorten it up. I did appreciate the comments earlier, Councillor Wilson, um, to separate them. But on reflection, um, this is a recommendation from committee to council in any event. So if you wish, I could make a motion now that I think resolves the matter. And that would be that committee recommend Council approve the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority and the management agreements in principle as presented. And that committee direct the mayor to confirm with other representatives of the board the understanding of the term municipalities in clause in clause 23. So it would be very narrow. I would just call around and, and confirm that we all have the same understanding about what that means. And 
if that is fine, we have a week to get that done. Um, the recommendation would be before council next week in any event and we can confirm both. But I would just like to follow up. It's been a really good discussion here, um, but a discussion that I think would have been a benefit at the board level as well. Um, we, we lack the time to take this back to the board perhaps, but that wouldn't, wouldn't stop me from making some calls just to run it by others. So, I, I would, I've made that motion. And I think we're going to all resolve in a week if, if that's acceptable. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. There is a motion on the table. We need to eat. No hands. I will call the question. All in favor? There are none opposed, and that is carried. For administration, did you get the motion from Mayor Ireland? Okay. I wonder if it might be appropriate to take a 10 minute break right now. We'll be saying that we can say 11.35, it gets us eight minutes. <laughs> like to resume at a five. <laughs> so we'll resume our meeting at 11.35. Mm -hmm. Okay, council, we will resume our meeting. Moving on to new business item 7.3, parcel GB development information. Yes. Um, thank you, I can get through Mayor Hall. I had previously um, indicated that I have a conflict with respect to um, any discussions involving the development at Parcel GB. So I will absent myself if somebody will let me know when we move to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Pass over to Mr. Gibbon. Sure. Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Hall. This will be very, very short, so I hope the mayor just go for uh, far. <laughs> just wanted to provide an update to council. There was some direction to seek some, some information on the development to provide back back to, to council. Uh, just in terms of the verbal update, I've uh, followed up uh, directly with the uh, developer, the proponent. Uh, they directed me to uh, Parks Canada to uh, seek information as they submitted to them. Uh, and Parks Canada is uh, uh, not at liberty to disclose it to us. So I'm going to go back to the developer again. So we're in a bit of a circular pattern, um, but I did want to advise council that the you know, management is undertaking this work. Um, we don't have anything to report at this time. Um, we didn't want to be presenting anything that didn't accurately reflect the current status of the proposal. Um, and Parks um, has received, obviously, uh, application information from the proponent. But they're in the process of uh, advising the proponent, work with the proponent to make sure that the, the proponent's proposal meets the parts requirements. And so we didn't want to be coming forward with something that was either you know, past, past dated, past its best before date, because the, the design was gone. Um, and parts didn't have the authority to disclose that information because it wasn't submitted and just submitted to us or even to the public. So we will go back to the proponent, ask for the you know, most recent version. Uh, and Lane, if we receive that, we'll bring it back to council. But I just want to make sure that we have a follow up to say that we're working on this. Um, there's a little bit of a loop. Uh, we'll try to untangle that loop and come back to council with information we want to get. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Councillor Wilson. Thank you for that. And, and, and honestly, this was actually, I think, from a motion I made. Uh, it was only a courtesy uh, to the public. Um, please don't harass the uh, the developer, uh, they can operate at their own speed, uh, and they could they can share when they're willing to share. It. Like honestly, I, in my mind, I don't think you should be um, pressuring them at, at all. They, they've got work to do. They it's a it's their own development, but it, because of the size and scope of the development, we they only ask because I think the community is interested. Thank you, Councilor Wilson. Any other comments from Council? I think that's good. We can call Mayor Iron back for 138. And maybe the Mayor, I'll just yeah. as it was an yeah. item on the agenda, maybe a motion to receive the verbal okay. date for information. Council Williams, we got motion. Council Melnick, motion on the table. All in favor? Boom, boom. <laughs> Did you get that motion? Did I didn't even say it. <laughs> 
It's disconcerting how efficient you are when I am not here. <laughs> Welcome back, Mayor Ireland. We're moving on to item 7.4, RCAP advocacy. It's you. Thank you. I, I added this um, just for um, transparency more than anything. Um, I, I previously emailed to council an invitation that I received from the mayor of Edson to join a regional effort um, to advocate to the province on behalf of maintaining RCMP policing in our communities. Council had earlier taken that position in any event, and we have previously endorsed sending a letter to the province stating our position that we prefer to retain the services of the RCMP. Perhaps um, it's unnecessary to get specific direction with respect to the request from Mayor Zahara to join regional mayors in joint letter, but I thought it would be useful to at least keep the matter on the public agenda and to confirm with council that they authorize the mayor to engage in that respect. And I'm happy to do that. I, I have received a copy of the draft letter um, and I would like to discuss some of the terms with Mayor Zahara um, and perhaps with other mayors before I endorse my consent, but I'm not sure that we need to get into the details of wordsmithing a letter, but I would like confirmation from council that I am at least authorized to enter that joint initiative. And if I can just move a proposed motion, I can save that first for, for any comments anyone may have um, with respect to the request from Mayor Edson to join, the Mayor of Edson to join the, the joint initiative. But otherwise, um, I'm happy to make the motion. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Comments from Council? If there is nothing, go on, sir. Just uh, I don't know if it's on, on our part, and, and I don't know if it really matters, and not to be a sticker again, but in in the correspondence that was sent to us, um, there's the third paragraph um, that starts with through polling. Um, I don't know if, if it was intended or it got cut off, but I, I was having I was having trouble understanding that sentence. I'm not sure if it really pertains to it. Are you referring to the letter from that is in agenda eight of our I'm not sure we to what you're referring. Oh, I, I apologize. So I see what I can do is see in the head. <laughs> if I may then um, acting deputy mayor, I will make this motion that committee authorize the mayor to engage with regional mayors in a joint advocacy initiative with respect to the government of her proposed transition to a provincial police service. Thank you for your motion, Mayor Island. Open up the floor to any debates. Don't see any hands. There is a question on the table. I will call the question. All in favor? Do not oppose, and that is carried. Moving on to agenda item 8, 8.1 National Police Federation correspondence. <clears throat> this is where Councilman Oden, you have a question. 
Yes, and I wasn't sure if one had to do with the other, and I got confused there, so I apologize for that. Um, yeah, again, I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but I, I just I thought that there was a gap or something missing. I don't know if that was from uh, the transfer over because the, the that pair that sentence just seems to drop off. Um, so through polling that the NPF has conducted over the past year, it is clear that Albertans feel the same with here and then I. Mayor Hall, is yes. actually reviewing the package? I, I had the same question, but uh, certainly not going to take uh, uh, ownership over uh, the Federation's uh, document. But I would say that that looks like in the inadvertent period that should be a comma with an overwhelming 84% of Alberta's support for the Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, important to put in. Uh, or our output, uh, but I think the the principle is uh, you know requesting the municipality endorse the call to action, which was forwarded to council uh, to your inboxes earlier. Essentially, they're asking for the municipality to lend its uh, name uh, and logo to their call to action, uh, which I think is consistent with as Mayor Arnold described past council missions. Thank you, Mr. Dinan. I also thought maybe the word could have been way the same way. <laughs> Anyways. Any comments about this correspondence? Uh, Mayor Ireland? Although Council has previously and even just minutes ago endorsed um, our position with respect to the issue, um, we have not engaged with anything other than either other municipalities or our provincial association. And I am somewhat hesitant to lend our logo to any other federation or um, interest-based group. Although we, we are all aligned in our opposition to the proposal, it is a step for me, a bit too far to lend our name and logo to an independent organization such as this. So I'm a little hesitant to to accede to the request and and allow them to use our name and logo in furtherance of, of their cause. Even though I, I do support the cause, it's just different in kind, and I would prefer to conduct our business through our regional connections and partnerships and through whatever I'm supposed to call the former AUMA, Alberta Municipality Museum. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. All right, Council. This correspondence, we need to receive it for information. Was it a, yes, uh, Councillor Wilson? Uh, I would just make, or I, I would agree with uh, Mayor Ireland uh, as well. And I'd also make a motion to, uh, just uh, accept this uh, correspondence information. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Any comments from Council regarding the motion? I see no hands. There is a question on the table. I will call the question. All in favor? Do not oppose. This will be received for information. Moving on to agenda item number nine, our motion action list. So you have to see any of the Actions? Sure. Uh, actually, uh, I think all of the rest, uh, Councillor, you'll see that uh, we're generally on track. Uh, our next April meeting likely to be a big one. Um, I know that uh, one of the directors are working on the major items. Um, I think the only change that we would propose uh, to the endorsing is the removal of map makers or the culture. So there will be outcomes of Director Reed's work. But I think that the follow up from that presentation of July of last year has been completed. Um, there will obviously be other outcomes that will arrive at the committee and council table in due process, but I don't think they're, any, they're directly tied to the response to that presentation. Um, so, uh, for your consideration, um, a potential amendment to the motion action list would be to amend it to remove the mountain makers, arts, and culture item. Thank 
think I got her very good. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Gannon. Uh, Council Wilson? Uh, item, uh, well, Garage Week feedback um, is dated for April 2022 that you've been in correspondence with the development office on that one. Do we expect to see something? Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Paul, for Councillor Wilson. Yes, uh, administration is going to provide advice to council. We've had uh, a couple dialogue sessions with the uh, development office at Parks, um, along with our municipal administration to identify you know, concerns and issues that we might have related to emergency access, user access, uh, the other municipal services. Um, we believe that we have uh, a solid understanding of the majority of the issues, um, and we'll have a position to present to council for their consideration. Thank you very much, Mr. Newman. Any other questions from Council? The Council wishing to make a motion to receive this list amending removing mountain makers. Council Malik. Um, thank you, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. Just perhaps a question on uh, the third um, motion action list item relationship with uh, Jasper Community Team Society and Friends of Jasper Culture and Recreation. Has that maybe been effectively been covered or is that going to be um, part of what we received today from Mr. Reed? Can this one actually be removed? Mr. Gannon. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy Mayor Hall. As much as I would like to you know, have zero items on our to-do list, <laughs> I think uh, actually uh, that this one should stay. Um, the community development team it has been busy proposing a relationship policy that would better define uh, and specify how we manage certain kinds of relationships. So there's going to be an actual deliverable uh, that is in the works. Uh, there's a draft of that that we expect to present over the next couple of meetings, and, and uh, uh, in the main meeting we'll, we'll be showing that to council. Um, there was a uh, specific desire to say, okay, so what, how do we define those relationships, these specific ones, and more broadly? Um, the community development team is working on that, and uh, it will be ready to deliver. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gannon. I'll see what you need to make a motion to get this in for information. The amendment of Mountain Makers, Council Miller. Council. To open that for debate, to be honest. There's a question on the table. I will call the question. All in favor? Open that closed. That is carried. Uh, moving on to agenda item 10 council representation on boards and upcoming meetings. Open the floor to council. Council Melnick. The Jasper Yellowhead Historical Society will have their monthly meeting tonight. And uh, I'll be in attendance um, at that. And I believe um, beyond that, that is all on the plate for the next uh, week. <laughs> Thank you, Council Melnick. Council, I can, I have a library board meeting tomorrow night. And next weekend, I'll be off to Edmonton with the Friends of the Library. Uh, for a casino, Councilor Malik will be joining me. Um, Councilor Wilson? Sorry, just had to check another calendar. Um, I'll be attending school age community conversations tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Mayor Ireland. The date escapes me, but sometime soon. Uh, I have been invited to a meeting with four members of parliament, including our own MP, Mr. Soroka, uh, Michelle Ferreri, I believe an Ontario MP who is shadow minister of tourism, uh, an MP from Edmonton, Kelly McCauley, who is shadow minister of and uh, an MP, I'm not sure of his writing, Bernard General. And I understand that also in attendance will be 
Shelley Lawrenson, who is I misstated, but associated with the indigenous band that is doing work in the park on the pipeline through Parks Canada. Um, this is a meeting that has been put together through the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, started, I think, with, with one MP, our own MP, Mr. Sherlock, has, has expanded a bit, but it will be an opportunity to at least educate a broader mm -hmm. section of Canada about some of the issues that we specifically face as a municipality within a national park. So I'll be happy to take that meeting and report as I can after. I think it's the 20th of this month, which is next Wednesday. Thank you, Ireland. Uh, Councillor Melick. Uh, just to follow up with that, I believe the individuals involved will also be all in attendance at the uh, chamber breakfast um, that morning at 7 30 in the morning at the chateau thank you Pastor Ramek. moving on to agenda item 11 upcoming events there is as we just heard from council Malik, a jasper park chamber conference Commerce general meeting at 7 30 in the morning. The Chateau Jasper next Wednesday the 20th. And that evening there is a NEMA meeting at the deadlock from 5 till 7. <coughs> National Volunteer Week kicks off April 24th to the 30th. Emergency, emergency preparedness week, May 1st to 7th. The open house for that week is on the 4th, the fire hall from 3 until 7. That's always a fun one to bring all the people. There's lots of Food and watching just hot dogs and hot chocolate and stickers and pins. <laughs> uh, the state of the municipality address for the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce is May 11th, and we have an intergovernmental meeting on Tuesday, May 17th. I would also like to add on May 12th, the Snakes Hill Reforestation Project will kick off. And I believe that's everything for upcoming events. Does anybody have anything to add? Uh, Councilor Melnick and I'll move to Mayor Ireland. We have Earth Day on April 22nd, and the Rotary Club of Jasper has um, decided that as part of what they would like to do on Earth Day is meet at the front of the library at either noon or five o'clock, and we'll undertake a cleanup of the town trail as part of uh, involvement in Earth Day here in our community. That's great, awesome, thank you. Um, Mayor Ireland. Just a reminder for everyone that uh, the Uplift Jasper Mural Festival begins April 23rd and runs through May 8th. Uh, it commences with an Indigenous artist on the wall of, I guess, the Astoria Hotel adjoining the Jasper Pizza Place. And I believe that artist will be available at the NETNA um, event on April 20th. And just a little plug because we are an active community, uh, Canadian Rocky Staff Marathon and 10K races returning to Jasper on April 23rd. And if I may, um, if I go back one agenda item, um, upcoming meetings. I couldn't remember the date of my meeting with the four MPs, but I do recall now that it conflicts, in fact, with the arts and cultural community conversation on Wednesday, the 20th. I believe that the alternate to my appointment to that community conversation is Councillor Waxer. Um, so if there is anyone who could volunteer to stand in in my stead for that arts and culture community conversation at two o'clock on April 20th. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, and I would be happy to join that conversation if nobody else wants to or can. Councillor Edward? Yeah, I just wanted to 
to see if anybody else is going to be even next week, just so that we have quorum. I'm not going to be uh, in Jasper, so I just thought I'd let you know in case uh, the people have plans in administration can organize this as well. Thank you, Councilor Dillard. Any other updates or to add? I think this might be an appropriate time to take a lunch break and we would resume in camera. What is Uh, or, think, or we are missing something. No, uh, <laughs> okay. if, um, for council consideration, I'll just look to Mr. Vaughn. I think we'll be in Karen and Strong Little Prairie. I think they're both relatively brief okay. updates for council. Uh, you may want to uh, just deal with those and then we can do some prep rest of your afternoon. That, that sounds good to me. I just want to make sure everyone's in agreement. Mm -hmm. um, so I need a motion to move into camera. Mayor Ireland, that motion, all in favor? We're going to move to camera at 11.59. 